from the Breslin Center on the campus of Michigan State University. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of TV41's Friday Night Basketball. Tonight, really a treat for folks at home. We've got a semifinal game, Class A, MHSAA Championships, the Bearcats of Battle Creek Central, and Saginaw High. Well, Mark, this place is just loaded with excitement. And as you would expect, when teams get to this level, they've got it all. We've got great coaches. We've got great talent. We've got great programs, great tradition, all kinds of fans here tonight. These two teams both made it to this level last year. And one of them gets to move on again this year. The chase for a state crown is on. One's Friday Night Basketball is brought to you by Old Kent, Common Sense, Uncommon Service, and by your West Michigan Pizza Hut restaurants. Battle Creek Central and Saginaw High, the MHSAA semifinals are next. Back at the Breslin Center on the campus of Michigan State University, Mark Crawford, Bill Brandell, glad you've joined us on TV41's Friday Night Basketball, Battle Creek Central and Saginaw as we reach the final four, March Madness time, great ball game. They're introducing the starting lineups here at Breslin. Let's do the same for you. First of all, for the Bearcats out of Battle Creek Central, same five you've seen most of this tournament run, Hart and Freeman are the guards. Down low, Mark White, the runner-up in the uh, Mr. Basketball voting, Kenyon Murray, and Mike Mosley, who's listed now at 6'6", as he continues to grow this year. For Saginaw High, the Trojans, Daniel West and Marcus Buckley are the guards. Two very good guards. Buckley averages about 16 a game. Derek Smith, Jesse Drain, Nate Symington down low. Jesse Drain is the star, 6'7", and a junior. Averages something like 18 points and 14 rebounds a game. Bill Brandell, statistical comparison as we get set to go, tells you two very good basketball teams. Well, it just uh, just does that. Look at the shooting percentage, 53% for Central, 52% for Saginaw. Central likes to score a little bit more, but both teams live by their defense. Well, and we will see as the game goes along that Saginaw is in your face all night long defensively, man-to-man, -man, and they've held something like 17 of their 24 opponents this year under 60 points. There's the scoring by starters, sort of an interesting difference. Saginaw a little even down low and out front. Battle Creek Central gets a lot of points out of that front line. Well, it can be a little deceiving also. It looks as though uh, Saginaw has the very fine balance and that Central uh, likes to work the ball down inside. But uh, as I just said, maybe a little deceiving as Central scores an awful lot by way of the transition. They move people around, rotate them around a great deal. And so just because the uh, baskets uh, seem to be coming down in the front, that isn't necessarily that uh, Central likes to just dump it inside all the time. Very quickly, Bill, keys anytime you see Battle Creek Central, the pressure can Saginaw handle Battle Creek Central's full court pressure and boards. Battle Creek Central wants to run. They've got to get their share of boards. Well, those are just classic keys, as you said, and uh, both teams love defense, so both have to handle the other person's uh, pressure, and they both got to get on the board. So you're right, two very common keys. Sagging on the white uniforms. Tip comes down in the hands of a Bearcat. A smiling Kenyon Murray will toss it up again. Saginaw white uniforms trimmed in black and gold. Bearcats are in blue and gold on the offense. Down low, missing, but following are the Bearcats. Falls away, and the Trojans rebound. Jesse Drain gets the board, looks against the pressure, and they beat it over the timeline. Drain dumps to West. He tries to find Nate Symington. It's out of bounds and will stay with Saginaw. We are just underway at the Breslin Center in East Lansing, Michigan, semifinal game between Saginaw and Battle Creek Central. The winner moves on to the state championship contest at the Palace in Auburn Hills, 7.30 Saturday night. Long triple count it for Marcus Buckley. 
Marcus Buckley, a six-foot senior, averages two made triples a game. Three-nothing is our score, Saginaw. We can open this one right up with some long range from outside for the Trojans. And you can see the man-to-man. -man. Freeman beats it and fills it from the free throw line. 3-2 is the score. Central back within one. Saginaw goes over top to beat the pressure. Driving to the hoop and scoring is Nate Symington. It's 5-2. Looks like the Trojans are going to play their man-to-man -man, uh, pretty much half court. They will pick up the defense around the half court. White looks inside. Mosley lost it out of bounds. Touched it last. It'll go Saginaw. They are super intense with their man-to-man -man defense, but you're right, Mark. I don't think it's the same style as the uh, Bearcats go with their full court pressure. Saginaw finds a two-on-one again. Partially blocked, I think, by David Hart. And as they fight for the rebound, Saginaw's Derek Smith will pick up the personal foul. Six and a half still to play. First quarter, it's 5-2 Saginaw. Another one of our keys, uh, just uh, as officials go, Mark, how are they going to call this one with two teams that love to play defense as intense as these two clubs? Uh, how they call and who gets to stay in the ball game uh, could also be very important. Pretty much had to call that one on Derek Smith as he tackles the Bearcat. Boy, Central finding the going very rough against this tight man-to-man -man defense from Saginaw. Chuck Turner told us before the game how his kids handle this man-to-man -man early on would be very important. David Hart just inside the free throw line. It'll go, and he's fouled. Are they going to count the bucket? The foul is away from the shot. They will count the bucket. And I think the foul is on uh, Mike Mosley. Well, David Hart going down into the paint, uh, not real close to the bucket, but made a nice uh, penetrating move, got up with a nice little soft jumper. David Hart, another one of those individuals that's grown since the beginning of the season, Mark. I think he started out at 6'2". He's now up around 6'3 and a half, even 6'4", listed in some of the programs. Mosley does get the foul. Central gets the bucket. They're within one at 5'4". Saginaw misses. Follows on a beautiful scoop and doesn't get it. Bearcats want to run. Freeman, one-on-one, -on -one, pulls up and hits. Central's first lead. They're up 6'5". Good crowd on hand here at Breslin. They seat about 15,000. We've got to have about 10 grand in here right now. Central steals. Traveling is called. Well, Kenyon Murray uh, just got one extra little step in there. Awful close. But the official right on top of the situation, Mark. Uh, that's one of those things where that's just tantalizing and you can't quite get the ball down on the floor as you take off. Another triple try for Saginaw off the iron. And the rebound dragged down by Kenyon Murray, his second. And Dave Hart is quickly over the timeline for Battle Creek Central. Bearcats lead by one, 6-5. We've played three minutes here at the Breslin Center at MSU. Mark White trying to beat the man-to-man -man defense and can't. Central's going to have to do some picking here. Hart wheels into the paint, spins and shoots. Hard off the iron. Board is dragged down by Saginaw High. Almost taken away by Mosley, but Daniel West comes away. Contact and a blocking foul called on the Bearcats. David Freeman will pick up the personal right in front of Bearcat head basketball coach Chuck Turner, who gives a scowl and a grimace to John McMeekins, one of our referees. Well, you set a pick like that, or not a pick, but uh, just set yourself defensively and take that kind of uh, contact. You're uh, looking to get the uh, charging call offensively. Did not go for the Bearcats that time. Saginaw basketball. They trail by one. Would have been a two-pointer. It falls off the iron hard, and here come the Bearcats. White in transition has it knocked loose. Mosley had it, lost it. White gets it back and scores. Well, some uh, loose ball situations down there in the paint that time. Mark White finally comes up with it, gets it up off the uh, edge of the rim, gets his two. Bearcats' Kenyon Murray goes to the floor trying to pick up the loose basketball, but Saginaw, trailing by 3-8-5, keeps possession. And even four minutes still to play here in this first quarter. Looks like the Trojans are uh, fine with the idea of shooting three-pointers as winding up was Buckley that time. 
They really have not done a job yet as far as getting the ball down in tight to uh, drain down there in the paint. Been working it around the front and content to take that perimeter shot. There's a good one. Buckley with his second triple of the game. He's got six, and it's 8-8. We're all tied. Hart to White. Spins and draws the pressure. Looks like the uh, Saginaw High Trojans are ready to help out whenever Mark White has the basketball as well as the two or three players in man-to-man -man coverage down low. We're both watching Mark White as well as kind of hanging on to their uh, teammates. Gentleman there uh, with his hand on his chin is Marshall Thomas, the head coach of Saginaw. Nice gentleman. His team reached the semifinals last year, fell to Detroit Southwestern. Bearcats reached the semifinal last year, fell to Cooley. So two pretty hungry ball clubs who have been to this Final Four level before and want to make it to the Final Two. The big show, the championship Saturday, 7.30 at the Palace. That personal foul just a minute ago, uh, Mark, went by way of Derek Smith. That's his second personal foul, and he's one of the best defensive players for the Trojans, and he's drawn the job of guarding Mark White. Two fouls already. West dumps it off down low to number 34, Kareem Hammond, in the ball game, and Hammond hits the two. Saginaw leads 10-8. And a good, hard-fought first quarter. A little feeling out process, I'm sure. White wheels to the bucket. Collision blocking foul. Nate Symington, number 50, will pick it up. His first personal. Let's watch again, Bill. Well, here's Mark White, one of his classic moves down into the paint. And once again, somebody's got to step in front of him. This time it's Nate Symington, and he picks up the personal foul. Mark White doing a good job of drawing fouls on these uh, Trojans. We've mentioned a couple of times how they love to go belly button to belly button with you defensively. And there's Mark White again using the body and the strength goes right down low, hits the two, and we're tied at 10. White has four, Freeman four, Dave Hart the other two for Central, 10-10 tie. We are playing Saginaw's piece at this stage. They're very comfortable scoring 50 or 60 points. Down low, it's Jesse Drain. Is that the first two for Drain? It is. First two for Jesse Drain, right. And uh, not way down in the paint. Once again, about halfway. So he's not uh, getting the ball right down next to the bucket. Freeman went up high for the uh, high feed. Couldn't drop it in, so smartly came down, hit the reverse. 12-12. We're all tied. Boy, that usually doesn't work. Some great athletic move by uh, David Freeman that time as he went for the alley-oop. Couldn't get it. Had to come back to the floor and then go back up with the ball. West, nice drop-off pass to number 34, Kareem Hammond again. Hammond has four, and Saginaw, 14-12, out front by two again. 135 still to play in the first quarter here at the Breslin Center. Glad you joined us on TV 41 Friday Night Basketball. Great move away from the basketball by Michael Mosley. He gets the bucket. Basket by Mosley. We're all tied at 14. Saginaw tries to flip it underneath the drain. Central grabs the basketball but lost it out of bounds. And Mosley thinks maybe he was fouled. Mike Mosley definitely the last uh, one to touch the ball, but uh, there were a lot of hands hacking around his wrist as it did uh, bounce out of there. Battle Creek Central 14, Saginaw 14. Late in the first quarter here from the Breslin Center. Thinking about the triple was Buckley. In the end, we go back inside, and Kareem Hammond, who only averages four points a game, has half a dozen already for Saginaw. Well, off the bench, uh, what a nice little offensive spark for the Trojans. He looked plenty confident on that shot, too. White, a couple of spins, a little bump, and the foul is going to be called on Jesse Drain, I think. Boy, and once again, Mark White just continues to work down there by the bucket and draw those personal fouls. That's going to take its toll here in this game before it's over. Tough call for Jesse Drain, the young man really just standing there, and Mark White wheels around, and they bang into each other. It affected the shot. You have to make a call, and the officials call the foul and send White to the line. 55 seconds still to play first quarter, 16-14. Saginaw leads by a deuce. But Mark White from Battle Creek Central will stand at the line and has a chance to tie things up. Our Old Kent Player of the Year in 1989. 
and certainly a leading candidate to take that award when we announce the old Kent MVP, what, a week from tonight, week next from tonight. Friday night. And White knots this ball game up at 16. White gets two. Well, a moment ago I said we're playing Saginaw's pace. Maybe we aren't playing Saginaw's pace. Boy, eight points now for Kareem Hammond. Guy's going to have a career game here. He's been the right man in the right place here since he came in uh, off the bench for the Trojans. And just been Johnny on the spot. White, I think, had it partially blocked. Gets it back, scores, and he's fouled. And it's Kareem Hammond who will pick up the personal. Mark White is so strong in that upper body that when he goes up under the basket, you may just as well leave him alone, Bill. Well, watch it here as uh, Mark White, you can see, with uh, the position right in the center, gets the ball, kind of loses it there, gets right back up with it. Got people draped all over him and still gets the ball up off the glass, over the rim, gets his two, goes to the line here and tries to make this a three-pointer. We're at 18-18. And now 19-18 as White converts. Central on the pressure again. We've not seen the pressure result in a turnover yet. There it is. And White is fouled, gets it back, and is fouled. No, he traveled. Oh, my. Well, the Bearcat fans wanted uh, a bucket there. They like to see their uh, Bearcat streak. And they get up and get streaking themselves when the action picks up. What I started to say was we've not seen a turnover uh, caused by the uh, Bearcat pressure. Another bucket by Hammond. But really, the Bearcat pressure pays dividends in the fourth quarter more than it does in the first. Well, I think that's the key. It doesn't seem to be, be doing too much. And then all of a sudden, a team tires on you. Horn sounds, and we have played a quarter from the Breslin Center. Michigan State University, Saginaw leads by one. Billy, you're in big trouble. Look at that stain. Mom will make you sand for six weeks. Maybe even six years. Uh -oh. You can't treat those tough laundry stains if you don't see them. No wonder so many ended up in the dryer, set for life. But today, Biz Bleach, added with your detergent, powers out many stains you don't see before it's too late. So, Billy, what'd Mom say about your shirt? Nothing. Biz gets the stains that get by you. The Blitz has hit. At your West Michigan Chevy Geo dealers, the incredible savings place is here with savings and value. Cavalier VL or S10EL, take your pick, $159 per month. Hurry while the Blitz is here, because when it's gone, it's gone. Make your best deal now while the selection's big at your West Michigan Chevy Geo dealers. What's this? A Redmond manufactured home. Our dream house. I wish. Come on in the front door. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Fireplace. Yeah, Redmond builds them solid. Kitchen. <laughs> All this? Oh, sure, lots of features. Down the hall. Going someplace. Oh, well, Redmond's built the best for 50 years. Almost forgot. This is all it costs? That's all I paid. Oh. Come to River Country Homes and see the difference Amish craftsmanship makes. National studies show that students who participate in high school activities, like music, sports, and drama, not only have better grades and attendance, they develop the character to handle adversity, the grace to accept defeat, and the self-confidence to start over. Crawford, Bill Brandell back with you at the Breslin Center at MSU. Saginaw leads by one. Very quickly, Bill, you and I had not been in this facility before today. Pretty impressive. It is. It's a gorgeous facility, Mark. I just can't understand why they put all this green in here. <laughs> you mentioned that as soon as we walked in. Thought maybe they had some kind of deal going Must have with been. the construction. Must have been. Right. They had a special on green paint somewhere. 
I tell you, there's certainly not a bad seat in the place. Everybody is right on top of the uh, floor here. Well, you know, I heard that mentioned as I watched some of uh, Michigan State's ball games, and they uh, just mentioned how close the fans were. And boy, I'll tell you, uh, comparing this to Chrysler, I always thought that you were pretty close to the floor at uh, Chrysler, but this is uh, this is really neat for a fan. They are just right on top of the game. Saginaw basketball as we get started second quarter. Long triple try again. Rattles off the iron and the Bearcats grab the rebound. A couple of substitutions in for Battle Creek Central. Taj Franklin and Howard Johnson have checked in. Mark White looks inside, eventually has to send it outside to Taj Franklin. A 6-2 junior. Howard Johnson a 6-1 junior. Bearcats Hart down low, dumps it off all by himself, Kenyon Murray. Boy, good feed that time by Hart. Woo! Great court presence there. has got everybody spotted on the floor. Almost a takeaway by the Bearcats. Kareem Hammond got down low, thought about the shot, and Saginaw instead will slow it down. There was a tempo change right at the tail end of quarter number one, and it's worth watching here. Saginaw tries the long triple. It'll go for Daniel West. Battle Creek Central has gotten Saginaw now thinking about shooting fast and up-tempoing, and I believe that's to the Bearcats' advantage. If we go 70, 80 points, Central's got to like their chances. Fade away by White. Foul away from the basketball on Central. Yes, uh, Howard Johnson's going to pick up the uh, personal as he had to uh, push his opponent to get that rebound. Mark White with an unusual air ball going over the bucket that time. Uh, that's not like Mark White at all. 6.45, still to play here first half from the Breslin Center. Saginaw 23, Battle Creek Central 21. Bearcats in the blue uniforms running the full court diamond one pressure. And Saginaw has done a good job against the pressure so far. Short jumper isn't going to go this time for Kareem Hammond and White on the break. Behind the back and lost it. Trojans come the other way. We're running, though. We're playing Battle Creek playing Central Battle basketball. Creek ball, right. Mark White that time uh, down there with about two, three defenders down. Made his little behind-the-back move and lost the ball. Again, not like a Mark White. Saginaw would like to get it inside the drain. Eventually, they fire and fill it outside. Marcus Buckley has three triples now. Nine points on his game, and it's a five-point Saginaw lead. 26-21, largest lead for either team in this game. High feed attempt by Freeman. Doesn't go, and Saginaw's running. Missed the first, but count the follow by Drain. 28-21 Saginaw. The Trojans just really come out of the gun when they want to run, uh, Mark. They are extremely quick, and lots of players getting down the floor. Mark White to Hart, who pulls up from 10, leaves it short. Rebound is knocked out, and Saginaw takes it away. Buckley is double teamed, gets through the pressure, he's fouled. Kenyon Murray, I think, will be called on the reach. Well, players got tangled up a little bit. Uh, Bearcats maybe just a little frustrated as the uh, Trojans put on a little bit of a run here, a little streak. Watch the reach in. You can see uh, the hand on the hip there and the reach in and the uh, tripping situation as the uh, Trojan goes to the floor. Bearcats will talk it over, trailing by seven. Pizza Hut presents the three-point play. Right now, put up $8.99 and pick either one, a meat lover's pizza, two, a cheese lover's plus pizza, or three, a pepperoni lover's pizza. Or for just $12.99, pick any two of the three. So go for the three-point play. That's one for $8.99 or any two of the three for $12.99. Now that's one deal you don't want to miss. Pizza Hut, make it a great if you had an old Kent Action Bank 24 card, you could get up to $200 just about anywhere for just about anything. You could buy a Corvette in Cadillac. 
or doorknobs in door. You could get orchids in Roseville. Or makeup in River Rouge. You could get a hamster in Hamtramck. Or a teddy in Bear Lake. Action Bank 24 from Old Kent. It keeps you in touch with your money all over Michigan, all over the USA. If you shower with soap, this is what you're missing. Zestfully clean. Never before. Never with soap. Zestfully clean. You're not fully clean unless you're zestfully clean. Soap leaves a sticky film behind, but zest rinses clean away. Zest deodorant lathers, lathers you clean, then rinses you cleaner. With zest, you feel cleaner because you are cleaner. Zestfully, zestfully, zestfully clean. Just a reminder that kids who participate in high school sports tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Catch the K-Wing special Saturday night at 7 on 41. Battle Creek Central trails Saginaw by seven. Mark Crawford, Bill Brandell, welcome back to the Breslin Center at MSU. 5.15 still to play in the first half. Central timeout, Chuck Turner didn't like what he saw on the floor. Saw a little fatigue, I think, and maybe some frustration, as you mentioned, on the faces of his players. And called something of a late timeout. Took him a while to decide he wanted that timeout. Well, I see, I think he sees a little of his own team in this Saginaw uh, offense as they get on a streak, get on a roll like that. They just seem to get hot, get their confidence built up, and you need to put a stop to that. Bearcats are a classic example of that. Boy, when they get on a roll, they can light it up in a hurry. We've got another timeout, and I'll tell you why, Bill. Battle Creek Central adjusted that zone, dropped a player out a little farther, and Saginaw saw it very quickly. I'm sure Marshall Thomas hollered at his players, call a timeout, let's set something new up. And the wheels are uh, turning now in the coaches' minds with still five minutes to play first half. Well, a little chess game uh, going on. You're right. Uh, very quickly that time, uh, Saginaw saw that defensive adjustment. A little bit of a change and uh, wasting no time at all. Marshall Thomas says, look, wait a minute. We'll try that again. Let's mention very quickly next Friday night, Bill, very special broadcast for us as we introduce our TV41 All-Star team next Friday night, 1130. And included uh, in that uh, evening will be the announcement of our Old Kent Player of the Year for West Michigan. So folks will meet uh, 15 fabulous young men who are also great basketball players, plus our Old Kent Player of the Year for West Michigan. Well, we say it every year, but uh, what a team we've got. What a great uh, pool of talent there uh, is in our viewing area, Mark. As you start to uh, try to pick out the top 15, it's hard to pick them out uh, anyway. And Holy mackerel, when you look at them on paper and think what a great bunch that would be if you could put them all together, all in the same uniforms, and uh, be the coach of that squad. Saginaw will bring it in again. And now you can see Battle Creek Central's dropped the zone back a little down low. The guards extending out pretty good, trying to make sure that Weston Buckley can't shoot any more triples. They are four for seven from three-point land and beyond. Central goes inside to Drain, who posts, turns, and fills it. Big-time move by 6'7 junior Jesse Drain. It's 30-21. Saginaw leads by nine. Battle Creek Central has been down a lot more than this. I don't think they're worried about that at this stage. Just inside the three-point line, in and out for Freeman White. Follows, no! Headed back for a moment, and Saginaw comes away. West. Ahead to Drain. Might have walked a little bit. Teammate Derek Smith is short with the jumper, and Central's Dave Hart gives off to White. Well, the Bearcats last time down had two or three opportunities there offensively. Couldn't get the ball to drop. Those things come back and punch you when that happens. You just have to get the ball down. There it is. Kenyon Murray posts up. Quentin Cooper, a 6'1 junior, who's checked into the game, eats him alive, and back within seven comes Central. Saginaw lost it. 
And Central on the takeaway comes down, trailing by seven. Toward the hoop, White to Mosley, short. Rebound, Saginaw. West looks one-on-one, -on -one, thinks better, and pulls it back. Sign of good coaching there. 310 still to play first half. Saginaw 30, Battle Creek Central 23. Defense, defense. Defense, defense. Defense, defense. Defense. Rosen think about the triple. Instead, shuffle back in the middle to Smith. Finally forces it and is fouled. Well, Derek Smith got himself in a spot where he had little choice but to shoot. I was just going to say, kind of trapped down there as he got the ball and then uh, put it down on the floor. And, boy, the Bearcats just collapsed three of them right around him. He had nowhere to go with the ball. Now there's four Bearcats around there, and he goes up with it and uh, draws the foul. Mark White kind of grabbing toward the jersey, as you saw on the replay, and it is White who picks up the foul. Nobody in any serious trouble for Battle Creek Central. Johnson has one. White has one. Saginaw leaves the free throw short. Is a two-shot foul. There's a good look at Derek Smith, 6'3", senior. Has one of two. Lead is eight for Saginaw. Substitution now as Kareem Hammond checks back in. He had 10 big first quarter points. Well, what a spark he was as uh, he really kept the uh, Trojans in this one with that uh, performance off the bench. Averages just uh, four points a game. Got 10 in the first quarter. About half of the first quarter. White to Freeman. Well, that's three times Central's gone to the high feed. They do get Saginaw to make a mistake in transition the other way, but three times now, Central's tried to find Freeman for the high feed. The high has not worked any of the three times. Once Freeman, as you mentioned, came down, made a great athletic move and hit a reverse, but they're only one for three converting on that play. Well, the timing is so critical, and Freeman is open on the play. He's down on the weak side of that defense, but he hasn't been able to get the timing. Good power move by Mark White as he spins to the hoop. Back within six comes Central, 31-25. And Saginaw beats the pressure, but the Bearcats steal. Ahead to White, tipped by Hart. Back to White, to Hart, who fouled. Boy, well, Mark White must have eyes in the back of his head. He had the ball down in the paint, dipped it over his shoulder, and uh, his teammate, David Hart, standing right there for it. Watch White now as he'll give the feed, the behind-the-back dribble there, and watch the feed right here. Right to his teammate, Dave Hart tries to get up with it. He gets hammered. Did you pick up a personal foul? Yes, it's going to be on Jamie Lay, I believe. You're right, number 24, Jamie line. Lay. And Just David Hart will go to the line. His first personal, as you mentioned, Mark, uh, foul is really not a problem for anybody at this point. The unfortunate thing, if you're a central fan, as Hart nails the first free throw, is that Mark White was open to churn in for the slam, and Hart didn't know it, tried to catch the pass, I think, that was intended for White down court, tipped it, and stopped what would have been a fast break. White had a chance. Mosley has it knocked away, and Saginaw comes away with the loose ball. Boy, a chance there for Central to make it a three-point play. 31-26 Saginaw. 145 now left here first half. Trojans to drain, turn around from 10 is good. Oh Boy, you can see why folks are high on this young man. What a smooth shooter's touch. Jesse Green, all uh, six foot seven, up in the air. Just a nice arcing shot. No way you're going to touch that. Drain has eight points and six rebounds for the Trojans. Triple try by Kenyon Murray. And the rebound comes down to Drain. He'll lead the break. Nice little pass to teammate Kareem Hammond, who has a dozen now. And the lead back to nine. Central had a chance to cut it to three only a few moments ago. Saginaw back up by nine. We're in the final minute of the first half. And turnover against Battle Creek Central as Saginaw 
has done a nice job in that man-to-man -man defense. They make you work just to take a pass. Well, they do. They got their uh, bodies right up on you. They're right in your face the whole time. And that time, the uh, pressure pays off as uh, Dave Hart takes a little fake from uh, Mark White, passes the ball to him, but Mark White was going the other way. And the Trojans get the turnover. Looks like Saginaw's in no hurry here with 40 seconds left first half. They're willing to stand and wait. And Battle Creek Central stretches that zone out a little way. Officials order the Bearcats to come out and put some pressure on the ball. Final half minute now of the first half. Saginaw content to lead by nine or more. Can't blame them for that. Well, they'd like to spread the Bearcats out, which they've done, and try to find somebody on the back cut down deep and get the nice little pup right here in the closing second. Central's in a man. Ten seconds left. Good pass down low. Bearcats make Daniel West change the shot. He hits it anyway. Fired up. It'll count if it goes. Doesn't fall. We've reached halftime at the Breslin Center at MSU. Saginaw out front by 11, 37-26. John Deere means quality. Wolverine, the largest equipment dealer in southwest Michigan, backs up John Deere's quality with professional sales and service. Stop in. Dare to compare our new 1990 John Deere Riders, STX Suburban Tractors, and Heavy Duty Garden Tractors. Our commitment at Wolverine to give you that special attention you deserve and John Deere quality you expect is even greater than before. Wolverine Lawn and Garden, Kalamazoo and Vicksburg, where we believe service is what sells it. Have an idea or invention, or maybe you have a simple modification to an existing product. What's your next step? Perhaps we can help. We're IMPACT, Idea Management and Patent Assistance Corporation. Call us now at 1-800-225-5800 and ask for our free information kit. IMPACT could have the program to promote your idea. Call us now at 1-800-225-5800. We think it's a good idea. Mark Crawford, Bill Brandell back with you at the Breslin Center at MSU. 37-26, Saginaw E leads by 11 as we get set to start second half. And very quickly, Nate Hampton, the assistant director of the MHSAA, is with us. Should I be hearing something? Nate, we wanted to chat with you for just a moment to tell folks real quickly about tomorrow. Can't hear us? All right, Nate. We'll appreciate it. We'll talk with you another time. Nate had a little problem, Bill. He was going to talk with us two or three minutes ago, and uh, a bus broke down. One of the teams is not, uh, I think it's Southwestern yeah, from Detroit coming in. And right. Their bus broke down, and so it's Nate's problem to figure out how to get them here. Stats very quickly, and they paint a less than happy picture for Central. Just not shooting well enough, Bill. Well, they certainly aren't, and a lot of those missed shots, Mark, right down in the paint. A couple of easy uh, putbacks uh, just wouldn't seem to fall for the Bearcats. That's the difference, really. 11 points here, but uh, that could have been uh, at least in half had the Bearcats made a couple of those puffs. Freeman loses it as he goes up. West lobs it ahead to a teammate. Hart runs it down, but is foul. Boy, that's going to be on uh, Derek Smith. That's going to be his third personal. He's the only young man in this ball game with any uh, foul trouble at all, and that was uh, just a contact <laughs> kind of chasing after a loose ball. That's his third personal now. We are just underway, second half. Battle Creek Central and Saginaw. State semifinal game. Winner will move on to the championship. 7.30, Saturday night at the Palace in Auburn Hills. Central trails by 11. Mark White with the basketball out at the point as Central works against tenacious man-to-man -man press. Mosley, sorry, Murray inside misses. Had a second chance and failed. And Saginaw, a little out of control. First two times they get the basketball here, second half has lobbed it up court. And Hart has run it down for Central both times. Well, and the Bearcats have uh, missed another opportunity deep down inside, working the ball offensively very well, but just not getting that paycheck. Once again, inside, down in the paint to Kenyon Murray. This time he's fouled. Jesse Drain picks up his second uh, personal foul, this time in the act of shooting, so the Bearcats will end up at the line. 
You'll see it again. Good, strong move to the bucket by Kenyon Murray. And Murray will go to the line. 6.59, still to play here, third quarter. Lots of time for the Bearcats. We haven't had an opportunity yet to see if Chuck Turner has switched up his press. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he hasn't. Well, he usually does that. He's got a whole uh, bag full of different kinds of defensive pressure that uh, he will apply. And being down 11 here at the uh, halftime situation, I'm sure he's going to come up with uh, a team. Lead is 10, 37-27. There was Chuck Turner. Saginaw beats the pressure by going over top again. Will run the offense. Boy, Drain thought about a triple there for a moment. Well, Drain plays away from the basket a little more than I expected, to Mark. He's outside quite a bit. Well, he's not their pivot man. He's playing forward at 6'7". Center's 6'4". 15-footer goes for Marcus Buckley. Good-looking point guard, 6-foot senior Marcus Buckley. He has 11 now. And the lead is 12, largest of the game for Saginaw. Battle Creek Central. Hart has it taken away. Off of the foot, it's a kick called against Saginaw. They really are right in your face. I mean, he was chest to chest with David Hart. Well, that's exactly the way Coach Chuck Turner described their pressure defense, and that can be tiring. We talked about how the Bearcats' full court pressure can put a uh, drain on you. Holy mackerel, when you get chest to chest for uh, a whole ball game, that'll take its toll also. Good fake by Freeman. Can't hit the 15-footer. Loose ball. And finally, Saginaw comes away. Trojans weave inside and miss. Follow-up, though, by Kareem Hammond. Boy, Hammond is having himself a ball game. He scored something like 70 points in the first 24 games. Only 70 points. He now has 14 here in this semifinal. White on move, but misses the pup. And the rebound comes down Saginaw's drain. Eight rebounds now for Drain. And a 14-point lead for Saginaw. Make it 16. Well, not the start that the Bearcats needed uh, at the uh, beginning of this second half, Mark, as the uh, hold continues for them as far as their offense con uh, is concerned. And the uh, Trojans beginning to just light it up here. Well, there's that high feed try again to Freeman. Doesn't work, and Saginaw in transition. Oh, the reverse scoop, no, and Central comes away. White. High feed again doesn't fall for Central. And Saginaw boards one more time. Well, we're certainly playing transition basketball, and that's in Central's favor, but they're not scoring any points. A lot of contact and offensive foul. Oh, my. Derek Smith goes to the floor, and Central picks up the foul. Chuck Turner wants a timeout. Well, things getting a little helter-skelter here. Kenyon Murray called with a foul. 441. Still to play here, third quarter. Saginaw has stretched the lead to 16. Battle Creek Center, timeout. Third shot, timeout, third second. Pizza Hut presents the three-point play. Right now, put up $8.99 and pick either one, a meat lover's pizza, two, a cheese lover's plus pizza, or three, a pepperoni lover's pizza. Or for just $12.99, pick any two of the three. So go for the three-point play. That's one for $8.99 or any two of the three for $12.99. Now that's one deal you don't want to miss. Pizza Hut, make it a great... Here's Christy Cook washing her car, again. She shopped a long time to find it. Old Kent helped her get everything she wanted. Plus, something she didn't expect, a payment that leaves a few more dollars in her pocket. Does the world care that Christy's car has a sunroof and a cassette player? Not really, but Christy does. Old Kent helped make the car Christy wanted, a car she could afford. That's common sense. Common sense, uncommon service. Old Kent. 
Oscar Preview 1990. It's our exclusive sneak peek at Hollywood's biggest night. Get the inside story on Entertainment This Week. Entertainment This Week, Sunday at midnight on 41. Chuck Turner has had a few moments with his ball club. They trail by 16. And, Bill, you mentioned a moment ago, not the kind of start they needed here second half. They were down by 11 at the half. And the first three and a half minutes here of the second half, they've scored just one point. They've had some chances. Well, again, they have. They've had some nice uh, position offensively with the ball down in the paint. Mark White in particular down there. Uh, a couple of opportunities. Freeman down there in the paint with it. And uh, they're just trying to get it up off the glass and can't get it to drop. They've only scored, uh, Mark, eight points now uh, in the uh, second quarter. And uh, as you said, three and a half minutes of this third quarter. That's a long time for the Bearcats with uh, just eight points on the board. Well, it'd be, what, 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes, just eight points, and that's not typical Battle Creek Central. Saginaw defense has a lot to do with that. Trojans think about the triple, pull it back out top. Every possession becoming important for Battle Creek Central. Saginaw, the pull-up jumper, does everything but fall, and Mark White brings down his eighth rebound. White working one-on-one, -on -one. good dump pass, counts the bucket. Kenyon Murray off the good assist from Mark White, back to a 14-point game, and Central, new press. And as pretty as that offensive play was, uh, Mark, that ball didn't want to go down real bad. Sort of a 2-1-2 press, Central steals. Hart in the paint. Good pass to Mosley. And up and calling a timeout immediately is Marshall Thomas of Saginaw. He doesn't like anything he sees here in the last 30 seconds. And at 43-31, Marshall Thomas is well, going to talk things over with his team. Marshall Thomas knows exactly what uh, the Bearcats like to do with one of their little streaks here offensively. He's just not going to let that happen as uh, just four points later, he's going to stop it for a while. Oh, wait a minute, Marshall Thomas may be going to get away with one here. He's telling the refs now he didn't want a timeout. Keep playing. I think and I think, I think the refs are not going to have anything of that. He's saying, you called a timeout. Sit him down yeah, and talk, talk to, to him. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want it or not. 43-31 <laughs> is our score. Saginaw leads Battle Creek Central. Note for folks who are interested in going to the finals, you do not have to travel uh, to the Palace Saturday to pick up your tickets. You can actually order them through Ticketmaster. So uh, any Ticketmaster location on Sunday will be able to take care of tickets for you. Just a phone call away. 43-31. We should say a group of uh, thank yous very quickly, Bill to folks who have helped make this broadcast possible, beginning with John Johnson, Jack Roberts, Dolores Lake at the MHSAA. Lori Schultz is uh, out of the Sports Information Department here at Michigan State University helped us out. And Wally Warden and Gavin Smith from the Breslin Center, a great deal of help to our crew in setting up here. First time we've visited here, and I tell you, I'd like to come back here every week. No, oh, this is fun. Beautiful facility, and uh, as you and I are going to get spoiled uh, with this kind of equipment and uh, hospitality, Mark, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be hard pressed to find anything to match this. There's Marshall Thomas, gentleman in the uh, gray suit. Some final instructions for his club as they come out, leading by 12, 43-31. But Central has changed the pressure on them. He's going to change what he does against the press, and who knows? Chuck Turner may switch up the uh, defense one more time. Well, Chuck's got a whole bundle of them, as uh, we have already mentioned. Uh, there's nothing that is more confusing than to see a number of different uh, penalties or presses. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of penalties as we have a Trojan at the line here. Technical foul is called on Central. I didn't hear or see what happened. working stats with us again tonight tells us that he heard uh, bench technical over the uh, public address system at any rate the Trojans convert get two valuable points and get the ball now at uh, half court right in front of us 45 31 
shot from Brett Powers, who is uh, kneeling right next to us there, looking up at the players. And Saginaw, with a 14-point lead, has the basketball. Well, they could get it right back to that 16 very easily, Mark, as the uh, Bearcats had cut into that by four points. Central's in a man-to-man -man defense. Working hard, but I'll tell you, it just doesn't compare to the man-to-man -man Saginaw plays, does it? Well, and it, uh, of course, is running time off the clock, and the uh, Trojans uh, could care less about that. They just assume uh, let those seconds pick right off. Especially if they can convert with Jesse Drain. Lead is 16 for Saginaw. Drain with 12 points on uh, his afternoon's work. Mark White posts, drops it off, wants it back. Kicked out of bounds, last touched by Jesse Drain. Well, before this season began, Chuck Turner and his team set as a goal improving on last year's tournament performance. They can do that. They have an opportunity today to reach the finals. Last year, they fell in the semis, so they're at the same stage they were last year when they lost. White scoops and misses, gets it back, and his foul going up. Well, once again, Mark White down in the paint, but just cannot seem to get the ball to drop for him, uh, Mark. He uh, gets his own rebound a couple of times here, does some great work. You can see the uh, effort. Ball control just cannot seem to get the two points, and that's what the Bearcats need. It's nice to go to the foul line, but you need that bucket and the foul shot at this point. Personal is on Derek Smith, his third, and we'll send Mark White to the line. White at the line. I've got uh, four fouls on Derek Smith, Mark. I believe that's four. You're right. They've adjusted the uh, scoreboard total to four now as well. Fourteen point game. Saginaw leads. Central pressure. Let's have Saginaw just a little bit confused. Trojans break it now. Got a foul and the bucket will go. Well, the Trojans end up with a two-on-one down there, and uh, Dave Hart all alone down underneath the uh, basket. He's the uh, lone defender. He goes up and makes the uh, defensive move here, but you'll see the body contact right there. The ball falls through the hoop. We get two. We'll go to the line here with the Trojans ready to add to their lead. Well, I don't know where this Kareem Hammond has been all year. As mentioned, he's averaging about three, three-and-a-half points a game. He has 16 here for Saginaw tonight, coming in after uh, the foul difficulties that Derek Smith got into. Didn't start and now has 17 points. Well, that's quite an afternoon's work for a young man coming off the bench who averages four points a ball game. Like you said, Mark, where's he been? <laughs> White leaves it short from down low. And Saginaw, with a 17-point lead, gets it back. 2-10 still to play here in the third. Lots of time, but nothing going well for Central right now. Ball is tipped outside, and Marcus Buckley runs it down. Freeman works hard and almost grabs the basketball, but can't. Saginaw is now running about a three-guard offense. They've brought Jamie Lay, a 5'9 junior, in. And Kenyon Murray at 6'4 is having to guard him man-to-man. -man. They're running a little weave, and as you mentioned, willing to take some time off the clock. It's a good-looking basketball team. Boy, they are excellent uh, as far as their discipline. There's some great defense. Freeman will take it away and lay it in. I like to see uh, David. Mark Freeman there taking no chance with the dunk, Mark. He's going to get the two points. David Freeman, I'm sorry. Three on one, Saginaw. Drain lays it in. David Freeman dropped it down a gear, slowed down, hoping somebody from Saginaw would be dumb enough to come up and foul him and give him a chance for a three-point play. Central has the basketball, a trail by 17. White is fouled, but doesn't get it to fall. Drain will pick up the personal. It's going to be his third. And here we go again. Mark White uh, gets the ball down deep. And is just a master at drawing the foul, this time moving right to the bucket. But again, he needs those buckets to fall. The Bearcats in uh, desperate need of some three-pointers here. Marshall Thomas pulls his star, Jesse Drain, out of the game with a minute five left here, third quarter, just making sure he doesn't pick up a cheap fourth personal foul here in the final minute. There's Mark White. 
Rolls it around, doesn't fall. 52-35, Saginaw. Closing moments of the third quarter. Misses them both. And Hammond has the board. Two on two, Saginaw runs. And they're so well disciplined, you just knew they would slow it up, bring it back. Well, as we've been mentioning, they're in no hurry to score here and get the ball uh, to the bucket. Time on their side. They've got a nice lead in this one, and this is the style of offense they like. So they're very comfortable. 40 seconds left here, third quarter. Down in the paint. The short puff isn't going to fall for Jamie Lay, and Central has a chance. Half a minute to play here, third quarter. Freeman looks, fakes, sends it back to Taj Franklin. Gets his man in the air, can't get a call. White the offensive board, but it's stripped away by Daniel West. Is that a triple try? Hard off the iron. Saginaw boards, fires again. Ten seconds left now here, third quarter. David Freeman to White. Five seconds left. Got to shoot it. White gets it away with one second left. He's fouled and will shoot. Well, I don't know how many opportunities Mark White has had down there and has drawn the foul, but the ball just tantalizingly rolls around, bangs off the rim, and just will not drop for him. Once again here, the clock running down. Mark White with just one second now gets the ball up. But it would not fall. Lead is cut to 16. Just one second left here. Third quarter. They missed the second. Murray fires it up and gets it, but it won't count. No baskets, say the officials. We played three quarters here from the Breslin Center at MSU. Central, a long road ahead, trailing by 16. Let's get the tip. Let's go down and score. Unforgettable experience. High school sports, a good part of education. A message from the MHSAA. Big savings on big pickups. GMC Truck has just announced $750 cash back on full-size Sierra pickups. Equipped with automatic transmission. That's the biggest savings yet on Sierra. GMC Sierra. More power, more comfort, more payload. And a base price as low as $10,445. It's GMC Truck Month, and that means big savings now at John Tapper Pawpaw. Door GMC Truck in Kalamazoo. James Raymond, South Haven. And all West Michigan GMC Truck Dealers. Back at the Breslin Center, eight minutes remains for one of these clubs. Battle Creek Central needs to really get it rolling here. They trail by 16, 52-36, and Bill, they haven't been outplayed that badly here. They just cannot get shots to fall. Well, they just won't drop. They're down to 40% uh, now, uh, Mark, for the uh, entire ball game, and that compares with the regular season at 53%. On the other side, uh, Saginaw shooting 56%, and uh, they're a little bit uh, above what they've shot all season, 52% on the season average for them. So the uh, the uh, Trojans, you know, taking good shots, and they can afford to do that now. They're being very patient, and that uh, shooting percentage will go up for them. Central, on the other hand, they're going to be forced to gamble now, and they've got to just start clicking. As Battle Creek Central waited for Saginaw to come out, I saw Mark White go to each and every player on the floor and give them a little pep talk, trying to show some senior leadership. And Central will come out man-to-man, -man, working hard. David Freeman, tight on Daniel West. As Central needs to force some turnovers. Trailing by 16. Down in the paint, loose ball, Central had it back for a moment, 
standing on the end line was Michael Mosley. It'll stay with Saginaw. Oh, that uh, just drives you nuts as a player and as a coach as you get that ball on the takeaway. You look down, you got your toe on the line. Every possession, Saginaw wants at the very least to run valuable time off the clock. Seven and a half still to play here from the Breslin Center. They lead 52-36. Buckley and Daniel West, two outstanding guards, and Jamie Lay, their first guard off the bench in as well. They're running a three-guard offense. Foul on Battle Creek Central. Looks like they're pointing at uh, David Freeman. David Freeman picks up just his first personal foul in this ballgame. You can see the intensity on the part of the Bearcats pick up defensively, and I imagine we'll see a lot of fouls here in this fourth quarter. Well, it's a good idea anyway. They double-teamed the ball, and that's exactly what you'd like to find an opportunity to do. Freeman tries to tip it away from Saginaw's Jamie Lay and can't. And the Trojans keep it. They've run about a minute off the clock here, their first possession second half. I don't think that's entirely their plan. Central with the steal. Ahead to White. Lays it in. So Central cuts it to 14. There's the full court pressure. Kind of diamond one. Saginaw on the end line. Battle Creek Central ball. Well, the uh, Trojans tried to bounce the ball off one of the Bearcats that time. Missed them, and so they ended up throwing the ball out of bounds. Nice bit of defense on the part of the uh, Bearcats as they slapped that full court pressure on after the uh, made bucket. We've been saying it the whole second half. Now the key for the Bearcats is convert some opportunities. Well, and they have had opportunities. Just got to get the ball to uh, drop. Sometimes that's just an attitude thing. It seems as though uh, when you get your intensity picked up, the ball will drop for you. Taj Franklin pulls up from the free throw line. 12-point game. Rain trying to cherry pick for Saginaw. Teammates never spotting. And Saginaw eventually now sets up in the half court. Murray, Mosley, White, Ty Franklin, There's and the Freeman, the five for Battle Creek Central. They force a travel. Central gets it back. Well, that time, uh, Jamie Lay trying to make his pass, and one of the Bearcats stepped right in front of the gentleman he wanted to uh, pass to, and he had to take a little hop. Bearcats get the turnover. White posts up Jamie Lay and scores. Well, now there's the shots that have not been falling for Mark White. That one high off the glass. Not pretty, but it's down for two. Almost stolen by Central, and Kenyon Murray can't get it before it's out of bounds. How many times have we seen it, Bill? Battle Creek Central turns up the pressure that one more notch in the fourth quarter, and this place is starting to get noisy. Well, the Bearcat fans can smell a little uh, defensive pressure here. Got a foul on Battle Creek Central. Looks like it will go against Freeman, his second. Still a ton of time. 5.55 yet to play. 52-42. Central has cut the lead to 10. Well, you can also uh, smell a little difference if the Bearcats can cut that uh, lead down into single digits. Here's the uh, reach-in foul once again, as you can see, uh, around behind. David Freeman picking up uh, his second personal. Again, Chuck Turner doesn't mind that foul, though, because it's a hustle foul, and it's on a double team. Two shots, they say, for Marcus Buckley. That silences the crowd a bit. 53-42. Wow, I like this Marcus Buckley. He's a nice little guard, isn't he? Yes, he is. 14, 14 points. points. Gets them both back to a 12-point lead for Saginaw. Kind of one of those sneaky uh, players, Mark, that you just don't notice them, and all of a sudden you look in the book, and uh, you're right, he's got his points and doing a job. Mosley gets the two. Kind of a fortunate basket for Battle Creek Central as the basketball caromed off a Saginaw player. Four on one, Saginaw comes down, and the Bearcats run down the man with the basketball and sandwich him. White and Freeman with reckless abandon. Well, White will get called for the foul, but again, a good foul, as you mentioned, Mark. The uh, Trojans with a four-on-one situation offensively. 
This way you send them to the line, make them earn those uh, points by making free throws. Daniel West will shoot the one and one, and we've got a timeout. Five and a half still to play here at the Breslin Center, 54-44. And Bill, you and I should mention a very busy 24 hours coming up for the two of us. We will be at the Palace on Saturday, working with the statewide radio broadcast, MHSAA Championship Network. And folks in West Michigan can find us on WBCK in Battle Creek, WWJQ in Holland, WELL-FM in Marshall, WTVB in Coldwater, WCSR, AM and FM in Hillsdale, and WNLF in Charlotte. And that's going to be a fun day at the Palace Saturday. If you want to see some good basketball, get over there. If not, join us on the radio. Well, it should be a great time. Again, a beautiful facility as the uh, Michigan High School Athletic Association uh, initiates uh, a new site for their championship games. And uh, we're really looking forward to that. And we're going to see some great basketball, as you mentioned, Mark. All four classes with the final games of the year. And speaking of facilities, folks at home got a nice panoramic view of uh, this Breslin Center here at MSU. And this is certainly a beautiful place. We've been uh, singing the praises of this since we arrived a few hours ago. Very nice facility. You have nothing to say about this. Place. Well, I'm, uh, I'm still trying to figure out all that green paint here. No, it is. It's a great facility. And uh, as uh, you and I have said, uh, what I like about it is the nearness that the fans are to the uh, court. Boy, it just really uh, makes the uh, center of the basketball court obviously the uh, the center of attraction, but you're just right on top of it. You can just feel everything that's going on on the court. Not removed at all. I noticed you're a little bit afraid of those uh, high seats. You didn't even want to go up there and look at uh, those. That's a long way up there, isn't it? <laughs> Daniel West, the 65% free throw shooter. Can't find it. Mosley's rebound, and Central can cut the lead to single digits. Taj Franklin out at the point. Franklin, Freeman, Mosley, Murray, and White are the five. Saginaw's working in a zone defense now. White drives to the hoop, is called for the carry. Well, Mark White tried to make a move around a defensive player that time, and once again, the defense is right on his chest. Just belly to belly, and uh, he palmed the ball as he tried to get out and around him. Substitution into the game for Saginaw, Nate Symington, and sitting down is Jamie Lay. So they're back to two guards, three big guys. 5.15 to play, 10-point Saginaw lead. Drain, nice bounce pass, teammate lost it out of bounds. Well, Jesse Drain did everything right. And his teammate just off the bench, Nate Symington, just couldn't collect the pass. Well, Jesse Drain can run the floor, Mark, for a six foot seven. He's just a junior, but he gets up and down the court. That time, uh, he took the long inbounds pass over the top of that uh, full court pressure by the Bearcats. Ended up with a two on one, but the uh, Trojans couldn't convert. Davy Hart checks back in for Battle Creek Central. Bearcats run the offense. Hart is open. Boy, the defense collapsed quickly on him. White thinks about three, pulls up from 15, and fills it. Eight-point game with 4.50 to play. Well, Mark White has stepped up the intensity and tempo of his ball game as he had no field goals in the third quarter. Three already here in the fourth. No question, Saginaw's plan to beat this pressure is to go right over the top, and they have launched the ball out near half court almost every time. That's been the way for them to beat Battle Creek Central's tenacious full court press down low block Murray with the block has white ahead and threw it over his head oh, a little home run ball there not quite connecting with Mark White but that's a standard play that the Bearcats use Mark White seems to have a uh, second sense knowing when to uh, break for the other end of the floor when his uh, teammates are in rebound positions and the Bearcats get a lot of breakaway buckets off of that not connecting that time and that was a critical one <laughs> we got substitute in and out and in and out and finally into the ball game is Jamie Lay. He came in, he left the floor, he came in, he left the floor. He wasn't sure if the officials were going to allow him to check in or not. Saginaw basketball, they lead by eight. With 4.15 still to play. Pinned in the corner, take away by Central. 
And I think stepping on the end line, Saginaw gives it back to BCC. Well, the Bearcats have stepped up that defense 100% here, and it's paying off in turnovers. They still need a little better conversion rate on their uh, bucket shooting here. Got to get the ball down. And you see the foot on the end line. Good shot down low. Kenyon Murray doesn't get it. Freeman boards and fills it. The lead is six with four minutes still to play here. And Central on the press picks up the personal foul. Well, Saginaw, after being successful going over top of the Central press the last two times, has taken the little short pass inbounds, been double teamed, and gotten in trouble. Well, they, they take the ball right there on the baseline. You're right, and there's a uh, trap then put on immediately by the Bearcats. Two people will collapse on that individual, and of course, if they're on the end line, there's no place to go in that direction, and two defensive players in front of you, you begin to panic a little bit. The first time uh, Saginaw put their foot on the line and turned it over, this time the Bearcats get called for the foul. Daniel West earns the bonus. We should mention uh, Coach Marshall Thomas from Saginaw told us in the final four minutes of games this year, his team 83% from the free throw line. Boy, is that a sign of a good ball club and good coaching. Whew. One of two. We were just inside the final four. There were 3.59 on the clock as those free throws were shot. Central trails by seven. Freeman, a triple. No. White with the board has the follow. We got a five-point game, folks, at 55-50. Boy, a three-on-one break, and the Trojans of Saginaw are very fortunate to get the foul call. Marcus Buckley got himself so low, he had nowhere to go. Well, I was going to say exactly that, Mark, as uh, Buckley drove down on the baseline. You can see it real good right here. He had no chance as he was deep under the backboard that time, leaned back into the playing court, and the uh, Bearcats called for the foul. Dave Hart gets the personal. Hart with two personals. Freeman and White each have three for Battle Creek Central. Only three and a half minutes to play, so... Not real critical at this stage. Well, Buckley from the uh, three-point, or from the uh, free-throw line here, uh, a perfect five for five, Mark. Let's hope you jinx it, huh? 56-50, Saginaw leads by half a dozen. And now seven. Three and a half still to play from the Breslin Center. Glad you've joined us on TV 41's Friday Night Basketball as we close out our coverage of high school hoops. White, big move and misses. He's fouled from behind. But don't you wish he'd have gotten the bucket? Well, I think the foul's going to be called on Jesse Drain, and that could be four on Jesse Drain. But again, right, Mark White with just some great moves down there, but again, the ball just bounces off the rim, won't fall. Foul came after we left the replay there. The foul was uh, chasing the rebound. Mark White has a dozen rebounds tonight to go along with 22 points. There's Chuck Turner. Grimace, little growl on his face as White hits free throw number one and earns the bonus, 57-51. Saginaw by six. Lots of time left. 3.22 showing on the clock. And it's a five-point game. There's the full court pressure again. It's in the drain. Goes over top. Blocked by the Bearcats, and another foul is called on Hart. My goodness, the, the height. Who was that that blocked Freeman? The Freeman was almost out of the gym, uh, Mark. Watch as the... Uh, there it is. Holy mackerel. David uh, Freeman just skying to block that shot. I'm not sure whether the foul was called on uh, Freeman or not. No, it's going to be called on Hart. Hart uh, was down below on that particular play, getting called for the foul. Jamie Lay hits first of two free throws. He's only a 50% free throw shooter on the year. And it's
it's back to a seven-point lead, 59-52, and they are hitting the free throws here in the final four minutes, just as Coach said. Freeman, White, Hart, Mosley, and Kenyon Murray are the five out on the floor for Battle Creek Central. Triple try, Freeman. Hard off the iron. Mosley has the board. Now Hart will try the three. No, Mosley follows it up and in. Boy, Michael Mosley doing some great board work that time as he got two offensive rebounds and kept the uh, Bearcats going offensively. Air ball is tossed up by Drain. Another foul on Battle Creek Central as they fight for the rebound. 2.40, still to play, 59-54, Saginaw. Jamie Lay will go to the line. Murray picks up the foul. That is his third. And Jamie Lay, the worst of the free throw shooters for Saginaw, stands at the line one and one. Got it to fall. Well, he's three for three uh, as their worst free throw shooter. That's not too bad. Well, the coach told us that they'd be tough in the fourth quarter from the line, and they are, uh, what, 8 of 10 here in the fourth quarter from the charity stripe. 8 of 11. Central comes away. White looks one on three. Can't find his way to the baseline and sends it to Freeman. Hart's bounce pass is kicked away, but they give it to Saginaw. Well, I thought I saw a sneaker hit the ball. Apparently not. Apparently not, as the uh, ball just uh, right straight uh, out of bounds there. Jamie Lay goes right to the hoop and misses. Drain's tip falls away, and Central will run. To Mark White, lost it and traveled. 2.20 to play. 60-54 Saginaw. As Battle Creek Central continues to watch opportunities sneak away boy if the Bearcats lose they're gonna think back to literally a dozen good chances to score that didn't work out and now Saginaw looks like they're gonna try and run a little weave and take some time off well they are very comfortable doing that we've mentioned they are not as up tempo a team offensively Mosley with the steal Kenyon Murray set it up by sticking a hand in the face of Jamie Lay Freeman to Hart to White. Now to Murray from the corner. It's good. Lift the two. Four point game at 60 56. Drain over the timeline. Lost it. White to the hoop. Will score. It's a two point game with 90 seconds to play. Foul on Battle Creek Central. Mark White, we think that's number four. I think uh, it's only number two. Number four. Fourth personal on Mark White. And Saginaw will shoot free throws. Saginaw 60. Battle Creek Central 58. Well, this one's got to keep you on the edge of your chair now. Once again, uh, even though the uh, foul is called, I think that's in the best interest of the Bearcats uh, for things to happen here as the clock is stopped. And once again, uh, the Trojans are going to have to make some free throws or the Bearcats are going to have the ball. Timeout called by the Bearcats, trailing by two in the final 90 seconds. Pizza Hut presents the three-point play. Right now, put up $8.99 and pick either one, a meat lover's pizza, two, a cheese lover's plus pizza, or three, a pepperoni lover's pizza. Or for just $12.99, pick any two of the three. So go for the three-point play. That's one for $8.99 or any two of the three for $12.99. Now that's one deal you don't want to miss. Pizza Hut, make it a great... If you had an old Kent Action Bank 24 card, you could get up to $200 just about anywhere for just about anything. You could get a lobster in Altoona or a bowler in Bowling Green. You could get a hamster in Ham Tramick or a pastry in Bakersfield. You could buy an omelet in Denver. 
or a bridge in Brooklyn. Action Bank 24 from Old Kent. It keeps you in touch with your money all over Michigan, all over the USA. Well, when I was in high school, I played in a Merle sports. And that, in turn, led me into playing sports later on in my life at the collegiate level and also at, at the adult level. It was the high school experience that was really the start of my uh, athletic career. Those same programs today are really the varsity programs that presently exist in Michigan's high schools. High school sports, a good part of education. A message from the MHSAA. Mark Crawford, Bill Brandell back with you from the Breslin Center at MSU. You see our time remaining is 124. Two-point ball game, Saginaw leads. They have led by as many as 18 or 19 in this game. One final score to pass along in Class B. Buena Vista defeats Three Rivers, 69-54. Saginaw Buena Vista moves into the Class B final. They defeat Three Rivers, 69-54. Well, regardless of the outcome in this one, we have to credit the Bearcats with a tremendous comeback in this fourth quarter, uh, Mark. They have just really stormed back. Defense has done it for them, and if the uh, offensive opportunities they've had uh, could have been converted on a little bit uh, consistent basis, they'd be ahead in this one. Buckley shoots one and one. Oh, boy. Left it short, got the roll. Three-point lead, Saginaw. Battle Creek Central has yet to convert a triple tonight. We've only taken a couple. Buckley hits them both. Four-point lead again for Saginaw. And here come the Bearcats. Same five are on the floor. White, Hart, Mosley, Murray, and Freeman. Freeman thought about the three. Instead sends it back to Hart. 105 still to play. Freeman drives, fires, hard off the iron. White gets it back, has it blocked! With a minute to play! Central slaps at it, they call White, and he's fouled out. Mark White has perhaps finished his career at Battle Creek Central, called as he tries to knock the ball loose with 54 seconds left. No choice but, Bill, to try and get that basketball back. Well, you have to foul, but obviously the Bearcats did not want to lose Mark White uh, as he's one of the critical ball players you want in the ball game. Right at the end, when you've got 54 seconds left and you're down by four, you want your big, uh, your big guy in there. And uh, Mark White, one of the uh, players that was on the defensive trap that time, and uh, he's the one that got called for the foul. And some of the fans here a standing ovation for Mark White, aware that perhaps he has just finished his high school career. Central trails by four with 54 seconds left. Eric Smith, a 6'3 senior, will stand at the line. One and one. Doesn't get it. Drain gets the rebound for Saginaw. Oh, big board for the Trojans, and now they'll just try and run timeout. Kenyon Murray called for the reach. Good foul, and Marcus Buckley will go to the line. Boy, that hurts. Well, that does. Is that uh, free throw uh, hard off the rim that time? Bounced way out back into the paint where uh, Drain was standing. The Bearcats with great rebound position for uh, a normal carom off the rim, but that time the free throw uh, was kind of a high arcing shot that uh, just caught a lot of the rim and bounced way back and out. One and one, Marcus Buckley. Hey, these guys can shoot free throws in the last four minutes. Boy, they can. That's uh, nine straight for uh, Marcus Buckley himself. Nine for nine is Marcus Buckley. Seven for seven here in the fourth quarter is Marcus Buckley. Maybe you better not foul him anymore. I'd say you better pick somebody else. Misses the second. Loose ball and Drain runs it down. 40 seconds left. Five points Saginaw lead. 
Got a foul over in the corner. Will be one and one. Either Ty Franklin or Kenyon Murray. In any case, Jamie Lay back to the line. Saginaw is 35 seconds away from a trip to the Class A championship game. They lead by five. Well, that foul was called on uh, Ty Franklin. Just his first personal foul, kind of meaningless at this point. Jamie Lay gets nothing but the very bottom of the strings. The lead is six. And Jamie Lay, four for five from that uh, charity stripe here in this fourth quarter. JoJo Bogan's in for Battle Creek Central. He's a shooter. They'll look for him for a triple when they get the ball back. 35 seconds left, seven-point Saginaw lead. JoJo Bogan and Taj Franklin. Franklin from the free throw line misses, gets it back. Fates is short again. Mosley has the rebound in the bucket. Five points. The difference in Battle Creek Central will take a timeout, stopping the clock with 20 seconds left. 65-60, Saginaw. And there's no real secret here, Coach, about the only thing you can do if you're Battle Creek Central is try and steal the inbounds pass. If you fail, immediately double-team, foul if you have to. Well, you've got to put that uh, defensive pressure on right away and get the clock stopped uh, in almost uh, any situation that you possibly can. You can prevent the inbounds pass. Hope that you get the uh, turnover that way. You can try to steal that inbounds pass. If not, as you said, Mike, you just got to foul and get the clock stopped. Quick programming note. Tonight, 7 o'clock here on TV 41, 14th annual Kalamazoo Wings television special called Wings Hockey and Oasis in the Desert. Mike Miller will be your host. John Garrett, who directs our broadcasts, also handled uh, directing the uh, Kalamazoo Wings TV special. Tonight, 7 o'clock, the K-Wings an oasis in the desert and we are going to see the k-wings on our final uh, regular season broadcast of friday night sports two weeks down the road here april 6th we'll see the wings take on phoenix so wings hockey special seven o'clock tonight here on 41. right here the bearcats looking for a miracle trailing by five with 20 seconds remaining john mcmeekins our Official from Highland Park slapping his hands and telling Marshall Thomas to get his players out on the floor as he was a little slow sending them. Well, you know, Mark, you can just put the ball down on the floor and begin to uh, make your uh, inbounds count if a team fails to get out. Home run ball. Central steals it. This one's not over, folks. JoJo Bogan from NBA land misses. Back to Ty Franklin. He'll try the three. In and out. Mosley lost it. Murray for three. His is hard. Franklin again. The Bearcats try the three, but time has expired. And Saginaw dodges the bullet, defeats the Bearcats of Battle Creek Central, and moves on to the Class A championship game. Our final score, Saginaw 65, Battle Creek Central 60. Practices were always tough. No matter how we did Friday night, we always came back and worked harder Monday trying to improve for the next week. I don't think I've run into anything in life since then that's as tough as two-a-day football practices. I noticed this summer at my class reunion, the people I talked with were the ones I played football with in high school. There's still a closeness among the people. You can see that everybody still cares about each other. High school sports, a good part of education. A message from the MHSAA. Bought a new John Deere, huh? Yep. What'd you do? Sell your truck? Nope. Went to Wolverine Lawn and Garden. They really saved me money. <laughs> yeah, and service. Watch this. Nothing runs like a deer, and no one sells them like Wolverine. Right now, you'll find the best selection at the lowest prices of the season. Your new John Deere is ready for you at Wolverine Lawn and Garden, East Michigan at Sprinkle in Kalamazoo, and downtown Vicksburg. Catch the K-Wing special Saturday night at 7 on 41. 
Mark Crawford, Bill Brandell back with you at the Breslin Center at MSU. Detroit Northern and uh, Detroit Southwestern are out warming up in front of us. They're playing in the second half of this doubleheader. The winner will get Saginaw as the Trojans defeat Battle Creek Central 65-60. Bill, what a game comeback by Battle Creek Central. Well, it really was. The uh, Bearcats scored 24 points, Mark, in the uh, fourth quarter. The uh, quarters that killed them were the second and third. They scored seven in the second, ten in the uh, third, but came back strong with an offensive show. Uh, 24 points in the fourth quarter and maybe more important on the uh, defensive end of the court they kept the uh, Trojans with no field goals in the fourth quarter uh, gave up 13 free throws down there but uh, just couldn't quite get back enough uh, to pull out a victory here but a great comeback effort our old Kent MVPs tonight Bill couple of good ones Mark White and Marcus Buckley well, Mark White for the Bearcats had 26 points tonight, 12 rebounds, and uh, was a real force. He had more offensive opportunities than even that 26 points, uh, which is no slouch at all. But uh, Mark had really some uh, poor luck, as far as I'm concerned, down underneath the bucket as he just could not get a number of shots to drop. But uh, a great effort, and he fouled out uh, just at the end of this ballgame. And uh, Marcus Buckley on the winner's side tonight, 20 points, 9 assists. He's one of those outstanding guards for the uh, Trojans of Saginaw and uh, did an excellent job. I think he had a couple of steals in there, too, which we didn't quite get uh, from our statistician yet. But uh, he had a great all-around floor game also. At any rate, our congratulations to Chuck Turner and Battle Creek Central. They finished their season at 24-3. and three. Big 8 champions reached the semifinals, but no farther. Our congratulations as well to Three Rivers as they fell in the semifinals today to Buena Vista. Both great seasons and uh, super ball clubs just not going to make it to the finals. Well, they've... Uh, had a great season, as you said, Mark, and it's just too bad so many teams end up with a loss. Everybody but the Final Four, obviously, but uh, you have to wait a little bit of time and let that wear off, and then you can reflect back on what really a great season it was. And let's uh, pass along some kudos as well. A great season of basketball for us. John Garrett, our director. Karen Weller, our producer. John Doonan on the replays. Al Lowe working audio. Brett Bowers, Tom Bruce, Holly Brooks, Ed Fitz, Jim Foss, Kevin Bess, all running cameras, John Shute handling stats. Been a fun season of high school basketball for us, and we aren't done with high school basketball. We're just done with high school.